Uh, joining us briefly is Theophilos Jimaga, who is a mining engineer. Theophilos, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Samson. How right. are you doing? And right. So, uh, briefly, from an engineer's perspective, um, because you have quite a, a lot of expertise in this area, what would you want us to be looking at? Um, Samson, uh, good morning to your cherished listeners and viewers. Uh, just a quick one here, really. Uh, I believe that accidents don't happen, as you said. Accidents are actually caused. So we need to look at the cause of the accident. Uh, equally, uh, I also feel that uh, I'm of the opinion that we have not done enough education and sensitization across country uh, about explosives, their transportation hazards to the communities. Uh, can you imagine if this had happened in Takwa where, or it had happened in Bogoso itself? The fatalities would have been more than what we have at the moment. Now, I also feel that uh, the action of the minister is a bit of a, a quick and a knee jerk reaction. We have been told that there was a collision with a light vehicle. Why is the CEO of DVLA not asked to step aside or the Minister of uh, uh, Roads and Transport not involved? Now, Maxam has also been suspended. Those that depend on Maxam cannot just walk into another uh, manufacturer and say, I need explosives. So there will be impact on production, impact on work where workforce, and there will be impact on revenue. So we need to look at it um, critically and patiently. Secondly, uh, Dr. Obin, my uh, friend, was saying that there had to be an escort. Yes, I look at the, the allies is just an escort, as you indicated. But in this particular instance, we have been told by people who were around that there was not an escort vehicle. There was just the policeman in the same compartment as the driver. So uh, that also is an area we need to look at. Then we have also been told that the driver tried to use the fire extinguisher and was not successful. But the airline was clear, the regulation was clear that the fire extinguishers must be two and they must be readily available to be used. So in this instance, the, the fire extinguisher was not readily available to be used. So something went wrong somewhere. Then also the minister was asking whether the um, manufacturing will take place on site or off site. We also need to know where, if they are transporting AMFO, which we have been told, which is ammonium nitrate for oil, that is an explosive component mm. that can explode. So we need to look at these things as, uh, from the engineering point and look at it as far as the ally is concerned. <clears throat> Identify the causes. So, so that's that, that, there was, that there was no escort is um, a matter that was confirmed by the NADMO officer for the area. Uh, <clears throat> that's the, his name is, uh, is it Louis Afo? He confirmed, he's the deputy NADMO director for Prestia Huni Valley. He said that he knows for a fact, and he has witnesses to that effect, that there was no escort. Um, an escort could have prevented the accident. Is that the point? Yes, as uh, Dr. Tony Obin said, if we had an escort vehicle with a flashing beacon and a policeman in that escort vehicle, of course, currently as the law stands, there's no escort, there's no escort distance. There's no distance between the escort vehicle and the uh, vehicle carrying the explosives. But uh, industry-wide, you would have thought that they will have their own procedures and uh, policies that they have been using. So it would be expected that the escort vehicle would have served as an alert system for people who are also using the road, that the next vehicle following the escort truck is carrying explosives. Mm. That could have prevented the accident. And again, as I said, we need to do education and sensitization. This was just something waiting to happen, and it could happen again. And as I indicated, assuming it had happened in a bigger community like Bogosu or Takwa, would not have been it would have been more catastrophic than what we have witnessed. Mm. Uh, but, but you mentioned earlier why the, the DVLA you know, boss should not be taking responsibility. I didn't get that point. What did you mean? To no, what, I'm trying to, what I was trying to say is that 
we have been told that the, the truck collided with a light vehicle, uh, what we call a buboya mm -hmm. or motokia. So if we are just saying that the explosive truck for which the uh, chief inspector of mines has responsibility over his transport is being interdicted, what of the other truck that uh, collided with it? So I think that I'm just making the point that it's a knee-jerk reaction. We shouldn't have interdicted the uh, chief inspector of mines at this stage. From independence, as uh, Dr. Tony uh, Obin said, the chief inspector of mines position has survived all political uh, positions. You are looking. It is an office. You are, somebody, you are looking of giving a else. semblance, a semblance of independence in the process exactly. of investigation. As, the, I, and I that should that be that the reason. That should be the reason uh, people like him should be suspended or interdicted. Is that not so? Are you not asking too much? No, Samson, we are yet to even have any preliminary report. Nothing has been done preliminary. So it will mean that we are jumping too quick. The visiting now, team gave us a preliminary report of what happened. Samson, the preliminary team was not or do not include the, the professionals from Minerals Commission. Those from the uh, Western region are currently undertaking their tasks. Perhaps by Monday, they might come up with a report. And that, after that, a committee can be formed, a commission to investigate, and the chief inspector of mines will be set aside. The interdiction of the chief inspector of mines, had there been an a industry-wide consultation, even the chamber of mines, had they been consulted or something, there will be implications. Somebody will have to step up to the chief inspector of mines position. Mm, okay. All right. But you are looking forward to the investigations, right? Very well. Okay. All right, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And that was uh, Theophilos uh, Dimaga, who is a mining engineer, uh, speaking to us, uh, sharing his views on the development. Well, according to the law, and that's the Mining Regulations, um, Regulation 107 of the Minerals and Mining Explosives Regulation 2012, LI. 2177, it states that a person who transports explosives in a road uh, vehicle shall ensure the explosives are under the direct control of a person who has a certificate of competency in explosives. I'm sure that the investigations were established whether this person had that competency and that uh, that person who transports uh, a road vehicle shall ensure that the transportation is done under a police escort. It's obvious that the issue that may come up is whether or not the escort should be sitting right in that same vehicle or escort means that there should be uh, an advanced, you know, escort or someone to behind them. Because according to the law, the vehicle is not even supposed to stop when it is uh, moving. It's not supposed to be stopped unless for lawful reasons they are stopped. They are not supposed to be stopped at all. And uh, to avoid accidents, they are supposed to comply with a number of things. We'll find out through the investigations whether the law was complied with and who will take liability for what and how the community will be rehabilitated. We will take a quick break and return to continue with the discussion here on News 5.